we will be judged and the future will be judged by, uh, by what we do. Libya ensnared in civil war. The U.S. grapples with a no-fly zone. Three UCLA professors dissect the debate. This is UCLA Newsweek. I would ask what would be accomplished by imposing a no-fly zone. First of all, what are the costs? And second of all, what are the benefits? And on balance, what's the argument? In sort of a half facetious, half, half hopeful uh, response to your question, what should America do, is to butt out. That would be the best thing it could do for the region, uh, for the countries, for the peoples. There's no easy way out here. There's no way to avoid very serious problems. But I think that if you weigh the cost and benefits, we're better with a no-fly zone overhead where we control the situation where we want to control it than we are uh, doing nothing. We will be blamed more if we do nothing. In terms of costs, I think, credibly speaking, there would have to be at least some level of um, disabling of Libyan air defense systems, which means at least some bombing of Libyan sites. So that would be an international, um, either authorized through the Security Council or unauthorized um, unilateral or multilateral action that involves actual strikes on Libyan soil. That's a real, that's a very serious decision to take to move in that direction. But of course it would be necessary because otherwise um, any aircraft that are enforcing the no-fly zone would be jeopardized and I doubt very much that any single or uh, coalition of countries would be willing to expose their air force to that kind of risk. So there's a possibility of bombing and then the imposition of no-fly zone that suggests also that Libyan aircraft might be shot down should they defy the no-fly zone. So it's a situation of real use of force by the international community with respect to Libya. The Libyans are using force. Personally, I favor a no-fly zone. Gaddafi has uh, uh, the money hidden uh, inside Tripoli. We can, we can do sanctions all we want, but that money is there. He's using it. He's using mercenaries. He's killing people. He's killing civilians. He's trying to reconquer the country. This is very dangerous. It's a human rights issue and it's an American issue. So what would be the benefit of imposing a no-fly zone? Well, the first benefit would be that it would um, prevent the Libyan regime from having recourse to its own air force. So if the Air Force were being used in a way that was deeply aggravating the humanitarian crisis on the ground, or if the Air Force were being employed against the civilian population of Libya, that would be a very important benefit that would arguably justify the costs associated with imposing a no-fly zone. We certainly don't have credible sources within the Air Force or within the Libyan military reporting on the kinds of decision-making that they're undertaking. But having said that, the empirical evidence that has emerged suggests that the kinds of targets that the Libyan regime is choosing when it does use its Air Force, and it's been a tiny proportion of over overall force that's been used on the ground has been attributable to the Air Force. And that proportion, which has been undertaken by the Air Force, has been primarily at targets that are not civilian targets. That is, targets such as weapons depots, targets such as energy infrastructure, um, and targets that may be places from which armed groups are engaging in strikes themselves. We see that the Arab Gulf countries, the GCC, Gulf Cooperation Council, they've come out in favor of no-fly zone. We really, I think, would have to act if uh, the Arab League came out in favor of no-fly zone. Gaddafi himself is an unpopular leader in, uh, uh, in the region. If what the international community is seeking to do is simply back the insurgency and together with them topple the Gaddafi regime, and that's one set of separate goals that we might be talking about. But if what we're talking about is an action simply for humanitarian purposes, or an action to disable the ability of the regime to attack its own civilians, it doesn't appear to be the case that the Libyan regime is relying on the Air Force primarily for that purpose. A no-fly zone is in the air. It's not on the ground. A no-fly zone can be part of the country, it doesn't have to be all uh, the country. Our ships and planes outside uh, Libya, uh, uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, these um, can be used for jamming uh, Gaddafi's communications and facilitating the, facilitating the communications of the rebels uh, as well. We have a lot of instruments in our power. The Libyan regime is attacking its own population and in, in certain circumstances civilians in addition to the um, armed groups and it's doing that using ground forces. So if the idea is that we need to get a buffer between the civilian population and Libyan forces that are using um, coercive tactics, then I'm afraid that that would mean a much more costly form of intervention, namely an intervention that involves ground forces. We should not get involved in, uh, on the ground. We should not get ourselves involved in a civil war. All we want to do is establish the possibility of the, rebe of the rebels uh, making a difference. That's what uh, we want to do. We have to prevent 
uh, mass killings. This is a very delicate issue. I think uh, it's not a matter of uh, fly zone or no fly zone. I think if the rebels can be assisted to overthrow Gaddafi and perhaps establish something better instead of his regime, it would be welcome. It's not clear to me how a no-fly zone is actually going to advance humanitarian goals. What it will do is decisively cause the international community to enter into the equation having used force in a way that directly confronts this regime. I'm not sure what the benefit would be at this stage as a humanitarian matter of adopting that posture. There is an opposite argument, of course, that anything we do will get us into trouble. Anything we do, if it goes wrong, we'll be blamed. But we'll be blamed anyway if we don't do anything. We're being blamed now by many in the region. So my question is, what's better? To my mind, the most humanitarian avenue to be pursued at the moment with respect to Libya would be to put pressure on the regime to cause it to desist while also producing an exit strategy that would enable the regime to leave as peacefully as possible, as rapidly as possible, with some assurances. Now, whether that's still possible is an open question. As a result of the ICC referral, it's possible that no amount of inducement would yield uh, compliance from the Qaddafi regime because they may at this point feel as if no matter what is on offer, they certainly face the possibility of some form of international accountability in very short order and as a result are prepared to remain within the country fighting to retain power um, and, and pursuing the course that they're currently pursuing. For more on this and other stories, please visit newsroom.ucla.edu and follow us on Twitter at UCLA Broadcast.